Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video we're going to work on solving joint variation problems. So remember that in a joint variation problem it's a lot like direct variation when we're dealing with one, two, three different variables. So when one goes up, the other two will go up as well. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the problems and uh, see what things we can do to actually solve a few of these. With any type of variation problem, you want to write down the formula first. Uh, that way you just got some sort of base starting line of, you know, what you need. Then we'll go ahead and use a little bit of the information to solve for the unknown k inside the problem. Once we have that value of k, we'll be able to solve the rest of the problem using the remainder of information uh, written down. Okay, so let's see what one of these looks like. So in the first example, we have r varies jointly with q and t. Uh, let's see, if r equals 60 when q equals 5 and t equals 2, find r when q equals 3 and t equals 4. Okay, so this one actually just uh, says that r varies jointly with q and t. So we can start with writing the formula. So r varies jointly with q and t. Perfect. Okay, now for step 2, we need to figure out what the k value is. So it says if r is 60, q is 5, and t is 2, so we can use all those little bits of information and actually solve for the k. So r equals 60, q equals 5, and t equals 2. So the only thing I don't know is the k. So let's go ahead and multiply the 5 and the 2 together. There's 10. Divide both sides by 10. And I can see that k is equal to 6. So now my formula is uh, r equals 6 qt. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, now let's go ahead and solve the rest of the problem. So find r when q equals 3 and t equals 4. So q is 3, t is 4. So you can see all I have to do is multiply all of these together. 6 times 12 or r is equal to 72. Alright, not too bad. Let's take a look at another one of these that has a little bit of a twist to it. In this next one we have r varies jointly with the square root of v and x cubed. So if w equals 160 when v equals 25 and x equals 2, find w when v equals 9 and x equals 3. So again, let's start with writing down the formula for joint variation. So w varies jointly with the square root of v, so square root of v, and x cubed. All right, not too bad. Now if w equals 160, <clears throat> uh, v equals 25, and x equals 2, then we can go ahead and solve for that k. So 160 k, v will be 25, and x will be 2. All right, looks pretty good. So the only thing we don't know in here is the k, but we can go ahead and solve for it. So square root of 25, that would be 5. A 2 cubed would be an 8. So I have 160 equals k times 40. All right, not bad. Divide both sides by 40, and we get that k is equal to 4. All right, let's put that back in the original. So w equals 4 times the square root of v x cubed. All right, now let's find w when v equals 9 and x equals 3. So w v equals 9 and x equals 3. So we'll have 4 times 3 times a 27, which is kind of a big number but w simply equals 324. All right, and now that one's done. For the last problem, let's look at one that's more of a word type problem. This one says that the cost of printing a book is jointly proportional to the number of pages and the number of books printed. So let's think for a moment, why would that make sense? Well, you know, if you're going to publish a book and it's a very thick book, that's probably going to increase the cost. Also, it depends on how many of these books you're actually going to print, that would increase the cost as well. So we can see a relationship between our three variables. we got cost, uh, the number of pages, and the number of books actually printed. 
So from that, we can set up our equation. So cost is jointly proportional to, say, the number of pages and the number of books printed. Okay. So if it costs $60,000 to print 2,000 copies of a 120-page book, what is the cost of printing uh, 2,500 copies of a 92-page book? Okay. So this one, we know the cost. We can put that in. Let's see, uh, 2,000 copies of a 120-page book. All right, so you can see we can multiply these two values over here. So we'll end up with 60,000 equals K uh, times 240,000. And now we can divide both sides by that 240,000. This will give us one-fourth is equal to K. Cool. So now we need to put in our value of K into our formula. So C equals one-fourth number of pages, number of books. All right. So for the last little bit of this, um, what is the cost of printing a 25 or 2,500 copies of a 92-page book? Well, let's find out. So we'll take one-fourth. We have a 92 page book and 2,500 copies. Well, multiplying everything out here would give us 57,500 bucks. So remember that when you're working with something like joint uh, proportionality, if one variable goes up, then the other two will probably go up as well. So it's a lot like your direct proportion. Alright, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.